right, uh, my name's uh, Danny Kerr and uh, I'm an architect. Uh, I've been uh, in the profession for a couple of decades now. My main activity is as a university teacher. Can I ask you then, what does trans visibility mean to you? This is actually a little bit more of a complicated question than it first appears. Um, because for different trans people, because we're all very different, we, we're not all the same, is that we have different requirements from visibility. So uh, for quite a lot of trans people, you're actually looking for invisibility. You don't really want people to be aware that you're trans. You want to blend in with the rest of society. And in many ways, that's the way the legislation of um, the UK has worked. It's allowed people to transition uh, under the law, uh, but the framework has been that you then sort of disappear into a binary structure and nobody knows that you had a former life, uh, in including down to changing your birth certificate. But things are starting to change now. It's actually part of a trans person's um, uh, identity as well. And certainly as people become more aware of trans people, it's, it's, it's harder to simply disappear. We, we, we are visible. Um, so it's important for us to be seen, not just as trans people, but to be seen doing the things that everybody else does. So trans people don't do different things um, to other people. We do the same things and the same diversity and variety of things. So I'm an architect, so it's important for me to be seen as an architect, you know, doing what an architect does and as a teacher doing teaching and to show that trans people, just like any other people, do those things, but also do them very, very well. How can people better support trans lives? So um, on the issue of supporting trans lives, this actually links back to the visibility question. So if you're an ally of trans people, then you being visible as a trans ally is of uh, immense value to trans people. Um, the, the courage, uh, people often say to me, the courage to, to actually be out as a trans person is, is, is amazing. Well, I, I think we're at a time in our society which actually takes more courage to be a trans ally. So trans people are, are incredibly grateful. We need your support. If you're prepared to be visible as a trans ally, that's fantastic. If you're prepared to be heard as a trans ally. So um, if you're just able to stand next to a trans person in, in the spaces that we occupy, I, I, I find myself quite often by myself. Um, I'm, I'm with colleagues at work. I have friends I associate with, but actually in the ordinary every day today, I find myself sat by myself. I have to, to be alone a lot of the time. So, and this affects other trans people as well. So if you're prepared to be seen in the same space as transgender people, that speaks volumes. What needs to happen in architecture to be more inclusive of trans lives and trans visibility? Because the, the, the architecture profession is very interesting. This is why I want to be an architect, why I want to be part of our profession and, and to teach the, the subject of architecture, because the most important component of any building or any place are, are, are the people uh, within it. And uh, we, un we have to have that understanding of different perspectives. And so this, this is an issue of perspective, isn't it? Um, as, as we try to understand other people so we can be better designers and have a better profession, we have, we have to go through a process. And uh, I think that process will always start with an acknowledgement. We, we can't we can't really understand people. We can't understand how to respond to people 
until we actually acknowledge people. So we need to acknowledge other people. We need to acknowledge their perspectives. We need to understand and acknowledge that our own perspectives have limitations. How can you be a great designer? How can our profession be great unless we acknowledge our own limitations? That means reaching out to, to others that we want to include and acknowledge that difference and that perspective. And ultimately, at the end of the day, and this is proven in the research, that more the more diverse perspectives we have in the workplace, uh, in our educational environments, the, the better the quality of our delivery, the better businesses succeed, um, the better we learn. Where should people go for more information about trans lives? Um, it, information um, on trans lives is, is, is difficult. It's actually, it's difficult for transgender people. Now, you imagine realising you're trans and then you're going, what do I do? Who do I talk to? And this, this, is, this, this, uh, this is something that we go through. Um, and of course, you know, yeah, you can you can go on the internet and you can try and find things out. And of course, you can find out a lot of things that aren't true. Um, so you need sort of reliable sources. And uh, I think a good place a good place to start is Stonewall. Actually, Stonewall haven't always been the best organisation for trans people in the past, but they, they've turned themselves around. They're absolutely fantastic now. And if you if you if you go online and you look up um, Stonewall's resources, they've got some absolutely fantastic case studies uh, of trans people in professional life uh, from all sorts of, of, of walks of life and um, their, their um, personal experience of being trans. And I, and I think that's a fantastic um, um, place to start. Um, I've, I've been fortunate, I, I managed to get in touch with some organisations in Manchester when I was coming out decades ago. Um, what, one of the organisations that's Manchester based is the LGBT Foundation and, and they're very supportive of trans people, but also a, a good source of information as well. Do you feel your full self now? Um, if so, uh, what's the your favourite part of being a full self? Yeah, I I, I think for, for for trans people, it's the same for anybody. You can't you can't live in a state of denial. Being able to acknowledge yourself to yourself and be yourself is really really important to your own welfare, your your mental health, and 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 actually yeah, becoming a whole person. Um, am I a whole person? Yet, yeah, no, I'm not actually. Uh, I, I would say that um, there's, there's a number of aspects to it. Um, um, transgender, being transgender uh, and uh, transgender identities, they, they, they can be quite complicated. And uh, a, a lot of us experience what we call gender fluidity. So sometimes everything seems really clear and you're moving in a particular direction and sometimes that gets turned upside down and it can, it can be very confusing and sometimes you feel that you know you know a complete fraud especially especially with all the rhetoric that's in the media sometimes it gets to you and you you, you, you don't feel right and uh, but you know generally speaking it's 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 very very positive um for myself um, with the experiences I've had or continue to have, it's, it's very hard for me um, to see myself sort of successfully completing my transition. Um, there's workload, there's the justification of spending the money on it and, and, and all these sort of things and also transitioning at an older age as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, 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 it is a process, um, but the way I see it, it's it's about engaging in life. And uh, can can any of us really say that we're a whole person? And what what does that mean anyway? So if I say what is the best bit about it, it's, it's well, it's it's just the joy of engagement in in life 
Anyway, 